purity. Does the Bible talk about the need for pure essential oils? Thy way, O God, is in the sanctuary. Who is so great a God as our God? And thou shalt make an altar to burn incense upon. Of shittim wood shalt thou make it. And thou shalt overlay it with pure gold, the top thereof, and the sides thereof, round about, and the horns thereof. And thou shalt make unto it a crown of gold round about. It was directed by God that the items of the sanctuary be made pure. These items represent Christ, his ministry and plan to save humanity. Christ is pure in all his ways and without sin. That is why there could not be a taint of impure material used to represent him. Just as the articles in the sanctuary were to be pure, so was every other part of the service. The lamb was to be without spot or blemish. The food brought was to be the best, even down to the anointing oil and spices used for the service. Take thou also unto thee principal spices, of pure myrrh five hundred shekels, and of sweet cinnamon half so much, even two hundred and fifty shekels, and of sweet calamus two hundred and fifty shekels, and of cassia five hundred shekels, after the shekel of the sanctuary, and of olive oil and hin, and thou shalt make it an oil of holy ointment. An ointment compound after the art of apothecary, it shall be an holy anointing oil. We can see from these verses that some of the principal spices were myrrh, cinnamon, calamus, and cassia. These spices were to be made into an oil that was called an ointment or compound that was to be poured for anointing. You will have to watch my video oils in the Bible to see the evidence that these items were actually distilled, which is how essential oils are made today. You can find the link to that video in the description box below. The point of this video is purity. We can see that there are two references to purity before the list of spices are given. The first association with purity is in the word principle. In the Hebrew, principle means head, rank, captain, or chief. So these spices were to be the chiefest or best spices. Then we see the word pure, pure myrrh. One would conclude that it was not only the myrrh that was to be pure, but also the rest of the list. For this was being used in the sanctuary and only the best was to be used for God's house. We will see this in other references to purity. And the Lord said unto Moses, Take unto thee sweet spices, stakki and anka and galbanum, these sweet spices with pure frankincense, of each shall there be a like weight, and thou shalt make it a perfume, a confection after the art of apothecary, tempered together pure and holy. Here we have another list of principal spices, and again the call for purity associated with frankincense. Was frankincense the only oil that was to be pure? No. All of the oil made from the spices were to be pure, for the end of the verse says that this perfumed confection was to be pure and holy. So what is the definition of pure? From a secular standpoint, the definition of purity is freedom from contamination or adulteration. While the Hebrew uses several different words for pure when connected to essential oils, these words for purity paint a picture for us of the deeper meaning that essential oils are a symbol for. In Exodus 30:23, when the word pure is connected with myrrh and the compound that was to be made with it, after the art of apothecary, uses this Hebrew word for pure. Its definition meaning freedom, clear liberty. Here we find that the oils, also known as ointment or compound in the Bible, were to be free from all physical contaminants, just like all the parts of the sanctuary service. 
While looking at verse 34 again of the same chapter, the word used for pure frankincense means clear or clean. Again, we find that the oils were to be clear, pure, clean from all other additives. Well, in verse 35, the word pure to describe the entire perfume or confection used this word, which means pure, whether in physical, chemical, ceremonial, or moral sense. Again, we find that the physical makeup of the oils were to be pure, free from chemical adulteration. These oils are mingled with the ceremonial and moral representation of the sanctuary, a symbol representing Christ and his work for our salvation. Notice how a certain woman understood the symbol for purity when she anointed our Lord. And being in Bethany and the house of Simon the leper, as he sat at meat, there came a woman having an alabaster box of ointment of spikenard, very precious, and she broke the box and poured it on his head. Did you notice that this was a very precious oil? To use some of the language we saw in the Old Testament, one might use the words principal, chiefest, or best. We can conclude that oil was indeed pure by looking at the Greek for spikenard. Notice that the word spikenard is actually made up of two words. The first one, pistikos, and the second one, nardis, or nard. The first word being connected with the purity of the oil with the meaning unadulterated, while the second word has to do with the particular spice used to make the oil. This was indeed pure oil. Only the best was to be used to anoint the Messiah. We can also conclude that the oil was the best and purest oil by the account in John, which gives us a clue into what the oil was worth. Why was not this ointment sold for 300 pence and given to the poor? What would this oil cost in our day? To find out, we must convert. In the Greek, the word pence means denarii. It is also called a penny. According to this business website, the amount of silver in one denarii would be equivalent to $3.62 today. But this oil was not worth one penny, also known as denarii. It was worth 300 denarii, which would be equal to about $1,086 today. This was about a year's wage for this faithful woman. How do people come up with a year's wage? Because in Matthew 20, verse 2, it says that the laborers agreed to a penny for a day's wage. The same Greek word used for penny is the same word used for pence. It was a denarii. Therefore, if the laborer was given a penny a day, their yearly wage would be somewhere around 300 pence. Now, would you be willing to buy pure, precious oil for a year's worth of your wage? The worth of this oil in our day, we found, would be around $1,086. Would you at least be willing to pay that much for essential oil, if not a year's wage? Let's do one more conversion. John says the woman had a pound of ointment. The Greek word for pound in this verse is Libra. According to the Roman standard of weight, the Libra was about 11.6 ounces of oil. So 11.6 ounces would cost $1,086 if we were to buy the precious and pure oil that anointed Jesus. So if I were to purchase essential oil today, the only place I know that has the purest oil would be doTERRA. And 11.6 ounces is about 340 milliliters. So if I were to buy 15 milliliter bottles, I would need to purchase about 23 bottles of oil to equal the one pound or libra of oil that was purchased for Jesus. I will pick lavender because the Greek word nard was the word they used for lavender because it came from the city Nardis, and so they called it Nard for short, but that is a topic for another time. 
So if 23 bottles at $23 a bottle for of lavender wholesale would be $529 without tax and shipping. This is half the cost of the amount of oil that was used for Christ if converted into our day. Certainly, this is not a year's wage. It's about a week's wage at the worst minimum wage standard. I hear people complain about paying $23 for a bottle of pure therapeutic grade oil from doTERRA while Mary spent an entire year's wage. Clearly, the Lord wanted pure oils used in his temple and on his body with no adulterations or ma manipulation by man. But do we have an obligation for purity today? What, know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost, which is in you, which ye have of God, and you are not your own? For ye are bought with a price, therefore glorify God in your body, and in your spirit, which, is, which are God's. We are told that now our bodies are a temple for the indwelling of God. How much more should we make sure what goes into and on our bodies are pure? We were bought with a price, the precious blood of the Son of God. Can we not spare a few extra dollars to put oils that are pure and free from contaminations and adulterations on our bodies, the temple of the Holy Spirit? The deeper meaning of oils in the Bible goes far beyond this video. Please watch my video on how oil is a representation of the Holy Spirit. We are called to use pure oil. Oil is the symbol of Jehovah's Spirit. The Spirit's temple is our body, and God calls for purity for His temple. So be careful, my friend. Do your research. You do not want to purchase cheap oils. Just as the thankful woman anointed Christ with the precious and unadulterated oil, we too should use the same. Adulteration does not only come from contaminants, but manipulation of the oil by man. Please watch my videos on purity for more detail on what's being done to oils. If we go back to the definitions of pure, which were connected with the essential oils of the sanctuary, we find a beautiful parallel. Remember, the sanctuary is all about Christ and our salvation. Christ came the spotless and pure Lamb of God to set us free. He came to give us freedom from the contamination of sin and death so that we could live a clean and pure life walking in the Spirit. Remember how one of the words for purity was connected with oil and also connected to moral purity as well? That moral law that we break causing us to be impure and sinful is the reason we need a Savior. Through the symbolism of essential oils, we see one remedy Christ has given us for the disease of sin. Christ is giving us victory to walk uprightly and morally, a pure walk if we choose to walk in the Spirit, which is connected with the anointing oil. My dear friend, please do not contaminate this beautiful picture Christ has laid before us by trying to save a couple dollars and purchasing adulterated oils. It would be better for you not to buy them at all. Choose purity. You are worth it. Remember, you were bought with the precious blood of Christ.